Right, this is the UKMT Intermediate Math Challenge from just a couple of days ago. Let's get straight into it. So this here is the only number that's not in the 3 or the 4 times table. Nothing more complicated to that. Uh, we can notice the 3, 4, 5 triangle here, right? We all know the 3, 4, 5 triangle. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 5 squared. The area of this, of course, there's a perpendicular right angle. Half times 3 times 4 is 6, so that will be fairly straightforward as well. Question number 3, so just do this in slowly. 5 take away 6 is minus 1, uh, so then we end with 4 take away minus 1. Uh, just read left to right here, 3 minus 4 plus 1 is going to be, uh, I believe, or oh, change it to a plus straight away, um, is going to be 0, of course. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0, 2 take away 0 is just 2, and 1 take away 2 is minus 1, so that would be that. Good, question number 4, you, you draw a line here, and you draw a line here, and then you draw a line here and here. And then you have 16 identical triangles, and, uh, and you've got one of them, so it will be 1 16th. Question number five, so, okay, well, we just work these out, 1, 27, sorry, 1, 8, 27, 64. I don't even know what that adds up to, but it's not going to be 10 to the power 3, it's going to be 10 to the power 2 at most. You can verify that it, also it, that it does actually equal 100, but, you know, if you're speedrunning this, don't bother, just immediately write down 2 because it's near 100, and it can be the only thing it could be. Here, we've got a 3x3 three three grid which uses 8 lines, and the reason it, using it uses 8 lines is because it uses 4 here and 4 here. So if you're imagining drawing this grid, you draw 4 lines going down, and then 4 lines going across, and that's what gets you that grid. Now, to do an n by n grid, you just need to do n plus 1 lines going downwards and n plus 1 lines going acrosswards. And the total number of lines is this plus this, which is 2n plus 2, which factorizes to that, I guess. Question number seven, so a percentage means per 100, so we do this number over 100, and of means times, I've written 60 million as this, uh, and I don't know whether I've done this, I've probably done this really stupidly, but I just said that this here is is times 10 to the minus 2, writing that in standard form, just move the decimal back a couple of places to get to here, and this is 10 to the 2, and then this is divide, so we take away, so it's minus 2 take away 2 to make this times 10 to the minus 4, and then, which is here I guess, and then we can just shift this round. 1.5 times 60 is 90, and this times this is 10 to the 2. Oh, so we get 9,000 in total. Question number 8, so we square both sides to get rid of this square root to get root x equals 9. Then we square both sides again to get rid of this square root, and we get x equals 81. Uh, question number 9, uh, so here are the four numbers in order from smallest to largest, which you need to do for the median. If you have a fifth number, it could go down here if it's less than 0, and then the median is 2. Or it could go here if it's between 0 and 1, and then the median is 2. Or it could go here if it's between 2 and 2, but the only number between 2 and 2 is 2, and the median ends up being 2. Here, like if you put a 3, you could do, because this is in order, the median ends up being 2. And if you put it over here, like if it was a 5, the median is 2, so the median is always 2. Question number 10. Uh, working downwards first, because that's the smallest one, uh, a power of 6. The only two-digit power of 6 is you're allowed to use 0, notice. The only two-digit power of 6 is a 0, 6, which is 6 to the power 1, and 36, which is 6 to the power 2. So I decided to just run with both of those and see which one ended up not working. Now, I think next I looked at powers of 5, because I knew there would be less powers of 5 than powers of 4 that are possibly four digits long. Um, so the powers of 5 are this, 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 and this. Uh, and then also this one as well. If you times that by 5, you get a 5-digit number, so that's too big. So I could use any of these. Of course, here I would use 0, 0, 0, 5, but I'm not allowed to use more than one zero or more than one of any number. So that doesn't work. 0, 0, 2, 5 doesn't work because there are two zeros. 0, 1, 2, 5 could. So that's fine, I guess. And over here, I could use 3, 1, 2, 5. So that's cool. And then we look at powers of 4. You write those out. They're essentially powers of 2 where you just miss uh, a few of them. Uh, and we get these, if you times that by 4, it becomes 5 digits, which is too big. The only ones that end in 6 are this one, but that would require doing 0, 0, 1, 6, which you can't do. This would require doing 0, 2, 5, 6, but you've already used a 0 here. So you could do 0, 2, 5, 6 here, but then you've got two twos. Uh, and so here, 4, four zero nine six can't put it there because of the 0, but 4, zero nine six does work here. No digit was repeated. The only digits you haven't used are 7 and 8, and the total of those is 15. Excellent. Question number 11. So just call the jar at J to start with. That's the amount in there to start with. If you give one sixth to someone else, that means you have five sixths left. If you then give one thirteenth to someone else, you have twelve thirteenths of this left. So you times that by twelve thirteenths. Uh, you could simplify immediately here. I just multiplied across, I guess, like twelve divided by six is two. So then you just end up with ten thirteenths. But I, I did the maths the long way around. Uh, I, I simplified from here to get 13 over 10. And 13 over 10 is, is 
three. So we have our answer. Question number four then. Uh, this is, uh, I scanned a copy that was used by a kid, which is why you can see this here. But as you can see, he's written 108 in here, uh, 90 degrees here, 60 degrees here, because of course, you should just remember your interior angles of regular polygons. Don't bother wasting time working those out. Just go into the math engine knowing them. 180 minus three th these three things is 102. So this angle here is 102. And now this here is an isosceles triangle because if this side is the side of the pentagon, that's the same as the side of the square. So this here is the same as this here because it's a regular pentagon, which means it's the same as this here because that's a square, uh, which means the same here because that's the equilateral triangle. So that's an isosceles triangle there. And then if that's 1 over 2, then we do 180 minus 1 over 2 and divide that by 2 to get 39 as our answer. Question number 13. Uh, the mean of P and Q is 13, so if I add those up and divide by 2, I get 13, times both sides by 2 to get that. And actually, you can just do the same thing here. So instead of setting up this, just double this number. So Q plus R is 32, uh, R plus P is 14. Now, if I add up all of these things, I get 2 P's plus 2 Q's plus 2 R's. Is all of this added up, which is that. Divide everything by 2 to get that. The mean of P, plus, uh, P Q, and R is P plus Q plus R, all divided by 3. So let's just divide that by 3, and we get the answer of 12. Question number 14, a uh, regular octagon, this, so I'll draw it out, has side length 2. It's regular, so all the sides are 2. Uh, shade the, quadru the rectangle that and that. Four small triangles remain. What's the area of the four? Well, again, just memorize your interior angles of polygons. The interior angle of an octagon is 138, which means if you draw a rectangle like this, the spare angle here is 45. Did I say 138? I was thinking octagon in my head, 135, um, 135 is the interior angle here. Take away the 90 from here and you get 45. So this is an isosceles triangle because this is also 45. So it's a right angled isosceles triangle, this is 90. So we can, if we call this x, we can call this x, x squared plus x squared is 2 squared. 2x squared is 4, uh, divided by 2 square root. And so you've got four triangles, all sides root 2. So the area here is going to be 4 times a half times root 2 times root 2. Four triangles half times base times height. That's two, that cancels, answer is four. Question number 15, kind of an interesting question. A triangle with three sides the same length but three different interior angles obviously doesn't exist. A quadrilateral with four sides same length, four different interior angles, if that did exist, it would definitely have a name that we would all know. So I think based on that logic, it doesn't exist. A pentagon with five sides or the same length, five different interior angles, now I think that does exist. And I can argue it by drawing this. Now this has, let's pretend this has three equal sides. And now I can draw the fourth and fifth side both being equal by just going up like this. Now this doesn't fit the criteria because this angle is equal to this one and this one's equal to this one. But if I just sort of bend this length outwards ever so slightly to make it non-symmetrical, I can keep these all the same length, I think, and just have all the angles slightly different. So I think the, poly the pentagon is, is definitely doable, I think. Question number 16. Uh, we've got a right angle triangle where the perimeter is 16 and the sum of the squares of three sides, so a squared plus b squared plus c squared is 98. Now this is a right angle triangle, right? So a squared plus b squared is c squared, which means I can replace this a squared plus b squared with just c squared. To get 2c squared is 98, divide by 2 square roots and c is 7. Replace that in here to get a plus b is 9 and replace it in here to get a squared plus b squared is 49. Cool. And now I think I can solve this. There's lots of ways to go from here, but the most stylish, I think, is to take this equation here and square both sides. So a plus b all squared equals 9 squared. Expand that out. And now a squared plus b squared is 49. So that there, I've just rearranged these terms slightly. a squared plus b squared is 49 from this equation. So we get 49 there. Take away 49. And now the area of this triangle is a half ab. So if I just divide this by 4, I get a half AB is 8, and that's going to be my answer. Nice that I found that without bothering to find A and B. I just like it when you have to when you get to do that sometimes. This is quite a cool question. So the perimeter of this shape is clearly 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2. Um, so that's 10. Now this shape is made up of the four hypotenuses of these things. So well, if that's 3, then this here is 1.5. And then we do 1.5 squared plus 2 squared, and then square root it to find this length. Now, 2 squared is 4, 1.5 squared is 2.25. Think about 15 squared being 225, and then just move the decimal back a couple of places. We get 6.25, which is actually just this, when you square root that, because we have to square root to find this, you get 2.5. Um, again, think 25 squares to 625, so that's how we find that root nice and easily. 
Uh, 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 is 10, and so the ratio is 1 to 1 because they are the same. Question number 18. How many squares are exactly 4 greater than a prime? So if we say prime plus 4 equals square, that's kind of what this is asking. Prime I can just write as p, a square I can write as n squared, and I'll take away 4 from both sides, and as soon as I do that you might spot the trick here. This factorizes to n minus 2n plus 2. Of course, a prime can't be two things multiplied together unless one of those things is 1. Like 7 is prime, you can still just do 1 times 7 though. So this is only okay if n minus 2 is equal to 1, or if n plus 2 is equal to 1, they can't be anything else. If n minus 2 is 1, that makes n 3. If n is 3, your square is 9, and I think the prime is 5, so that works. 5 plus 4 is 9. Here, n becomes minus 1, and n minus 1 squared, we don't really consider a, a square number. Also, even if you square that, you get 1, and then your prime would be minus 3, which also doesn't really work. So yeah, n is 3 is the only one, and, and, and it will be uh, one solution there. 19, uh, so this is uh, this is the kind of question that you just pray for on math challenges. It's literally just some algebra. So times this by n plus 3, n plus 3, um, and then we can collect these two things together, expand that out. Uh, yeah, now we can collect, so minus n and then minus 2 from this, you get this. And now when you've got a three-tier fraction like this, this one here just goes onto the top to make this expand it out, and the difference between the numerator and the denominator is just this one here, and we have our answer. Uh, 20 then, this is a nice question. Um, a couple of ways of doing this, you could write out the sample space of all possible ways of having at least one dice be a three. So first dice three, second dice one, first dice three, second dice two, both three, first dice three, second dice four, and so on. And then of course you've got the other dice could be a three, so first dice one, second dice three, and so on. And here you have 12 things, except you really don't, because this uh, outcome, having a three on the first and a three on the second, is the same as this one. Right, this is not two different outcomes. There's only one way to have a three on the first and a three on the second. So we'll collapse those in and we have actually 11 things here, one of which is a double three, and so the answer is going to be one over 11. If you want to do that in a more formal way, you could say that the probability is uh, the chance of having two threes on top divided by the probability of having at least one three on the bottom. Uh, the chance of having two threes is one sixth times one sixth. The probability of at least one three is the same as one minus no threes. No threes is five sixths times five sixths, because you just need to avoid the threes both times, which is 25 sixths. One minus that is 11, 30 sixths. And then these cancel and you get one over 11. Good, last few questions here. To find these three areas here, you want to take this semicircle, add this bigger semicircle, and, and that gives you all of this area with this bit counting twice, because you've counted it in this one and in this one. And so to get rid of not only one copy of this area, but also these two areas, you just take away the triangle. So okay, this, this one has radius 3, this one has radius 4, uh, which means if this is radius 4, that whole length is 8, and if this is radius 3, that whole length is 6. Um, and now we just need to do 3 squared times pi, 4 squared times pi, halve both, because they're both semicircles, and then take away a half times 6 times 8. And we end up with all of this, I think. I didn't even bother to work this out because this is definitely a fraction. And the only one with a fraction and a 24 is this one. So the answer must be that. Good. Question 22. So I don't think it takes too much effort to spot that if you just add these two things together, you get 1000x, 1000y, and 5000. I mean, that's got to be helpful, right? Divide everything by 1000 and you get this. And now the unwritten rule of math challenge is as soon as you see this, you factorize it. And this is really nice because I already know this, it's five. So if I could just work out x minus y, I could just times them together and get my answer. And now how would I work out x minus y? Well, I'd have to do some subtracting, right? So let's just do this one minus this one. And that's not immediately obvious why it would work, but this to make away this is 954. This take away this is obviously minus 954 because they're the same numbers. And this take away this turns out to be also conveniently 954. Divide everything by 954 to get this, and now this answer here is just 1 times 5, uh, which is going to be 5. Question 23. Uh, probably the hardest question on this challenge, I guess. You've got the numbers 1 to 9, which I'm not going to write this as this. I'm going to write as this. And now I'll link a video in the description below, but the way that you want to think about square numbers is square numbers are numbers where all of the prime factors turn up an even number of times. So for example, 36 is 2 squared times 3 squared. The primes are there an even number of times. Or something like, um, I can't think of any primes, 81 
is 3 to the 4. That's an even number of the only prime that it has, right? So what we need to do is we need to combine these somehow with six. We can take six of these and we need to make an even number of all of the primes. Now it's obvious we can't take the five or the seven because there's no way to get another one of those. So those, those are immediately discounted. The one is very helpful because it doesn't do anything. So that's quite good. If we take a six, we're going to have to balance that out with a two and the three. Um, I found I found one. This is this fairly quickly. One, two, three. This is a four. Essentially, this is a six, and this is a nine. Because here we have one, two, three, four threes, and one, two, three, four, four twos. So that's that number. Which, if you've got the same power there, you can just write as this, which is six to the power of four, which is or well, that's six squared squared, which is thirty six squared. So so the number is thirty six. So p we can say is thirty six. Then you just look at the list again and see can you make another one like that? And then after a little bit of effort, you get this. Uh, there's one, two, three, four threes, one, two, three, four, five, six twos. So that's also an even number of times. So this is definitely square. Um, so, okay, it's going to be this, I guess, um, writing it as squares, three times two and two times two. This is eight, this is nine. Uh, and then we can bring those together underneath the single square root. Eight times nine is 72. And we get the other answer of 72. And then we have the value of adding them up. 36 plus 72, I believe, is 108. Kind of an interesting question. I'll put a video below. Uh, talking more about that. Here we have a, a, an interesting shape down here and it's saying that what condition guarantees the line from v to x to q is a straight line? Like what condition can you come up with to make this a straight line? So from there to there, now it looks a bit bent on this picture, um, but what condition will guarantee that to be a straight line? Now the way that this would be a straight line is if the gradients of each of these are the same. We know they meet at this point. So if I just have this gradient match this gradient, then it would be a straight line. If this gradient is slightly shallower, which it looks to be according to this picture, then it's not a straight line. So let's just consider the gradient. Gradient is rise over run. Uh, the rise of this is D minus A. Uh, this D minus A. The run is C. Uh, the rise of this is just A. And the run is B minus C. So I think we need to have d minus a over c equal to a over b minus c. If we just cross multiply, we get this. Uh, the ACs cancel, which is nice. It's not particularly trivial trying to get this into one of these. But one thing you notice is that you always have pluses here. Um, and so, OK, it seems to make sense to just move these two negatives over to the other side to make some pluses. And then if you just divide by b everything and then divide by d everything, um, you end up with one of the two things there, which is good. Very last question, um, for those of you who are fans of the channel, you'll have watched my video about solving maths questions like a lawyer. I legit did this question in less than 30 seconds because it's incredibly easy. You just ignore this picture. You say here, all right, two unshaded circles which touch each other inside of a large circle. Just make those two circles the same size. There's nothing in here that tells you you're not allowed to do that. Uh, the distance across here will be six, which makes the radius of this big circle three which makes this distance 3 because it's also a radius, which means that it makes the radius of each of these two equal circles 1.5. And so all we have to do is pi times 3 squared take away pi times 1.5 squared times by 2 because there's two of them. 1.5 squared we've already done today is uh, 2.25 times by 2 is 4.5. 9 minus 4.5 uh, is 4.5 pi. And we have our answer. Excellent. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.